Hey guys, I'm Nick, aka the one and only Nick's Games. Today, I'm going to be teaching you guys how you can start a Minecraft 1.8.4 server. Now, this isn't a 24-hour server, meaning it's only going to be up when your computer is on, running it, and it's going to be using your own computer's resources. Additionally, it is going to be using your public IP that you only want to give. You only want to give your public IP to your friends, close family, things like that, because... People can do some really malicious stuff for it. Now, if that isn't for you, luckily, I've got a solution for you. You can go to rkt.us slash apex and get an awesome 24-hour Minecraft server that doesn't use your own computer's resources, that's up whenever you're asleep, when you're awake, it doesn't matter. It is up and online, and it, uh, it's just awesome, right? So you can go check it out at rkt.us slash apex. First link in the description down below. It'll take you off. There's an awesome server there that you can get for just $4 per month. Less than $40 a year, guys, you can get an Apex server. So go check it out. Use offer code NICK to get 25% off your first uh, first invoice. So anyway, guys, let's go ahead and jump on into this. If you don't want a 24-hour server, this is how you can start a server uh, just for your friends and family. So nevertheless, let's go ahead and first go to Minecraft.net slash download right there. The second link in the description down below. It'll take you here where you want to go all the way to the bottom where you see multiplayer server. If you're running on Windows and just want to set a server up easily, download this. Well, guess what we're doing? We're on Windows. So we're going to go ahead and click on that. Nevertheless, it will now download Minecraft underscore server dot one dot eight dot four and uh, bada bing bada boom. Here it is. Now let's go ahead and right click over here, create a new folder, and we'll just name this server. Whatever, or 1.8.4 server. Whatever you want to name it, that is fine. However, I'm just going to name it 1.8.4 server just to, so we know what it is. Now we want to take this uh, file we downloaded, this server program basically we downloaded and drag it into the 1.8.4 server folder now this may take a minute in the past it's taken me like 10 minutes to actually transfer this server file into the 1.8.4 server area i don't know why that is it just occasionally happens and sometimes you have to go re-download it so let's actually try that usually if it doesn't download super fast you can actually delete it if it will delete, which is a whole entire separate issue. And then come over here and actually re-download it by clicking this right here. I think this is a known bug by Mojang. I don't know why it happens. So nevertheless, now we've got this one, which is 1.8.4 server 1, doesn't matter. Now we can drag that one over there, and boom, it moves instantly. So again, this is just glitched out. You can get that to go away by closing and restarting your computer, and that'll go away if you have that issue. Nevertheless, let's go ahead and open up 1.8.4 server here. And as you can see, there is a 1 on the end of that. We want to get rid of that nasty old 1 by right-clicking, renaming, getting rid of that, and just making it 1.8.4 at the end. Now let's go ahead and double-click on this. It will run some stuff, do some things, and boom, it'll open up and download a few files. However, we're not done yet. We need to go ahead and open up the EULA right here by just double-clicking on it. It should open up in Notepad right like that. And we want to go through and read this EULA right here by copying and pasting it to our browser. I've already read through it. I read through it way back when. But nevertheless, this server isn't going to break anything in the EULA. So let's go ahead and change EULA from equals false to EULA equals true, T-R-U-E, just like that. If you don't do that, it won't work. A lot of people, I don't think, agree to the EULA for some reason. So you got to make sure you agree to that. And then file, save, and then boom, and double click on this again. And now it'll go through and finish downloading files and open up this nice server box right here. And as you can see, there you have it. Now, this is where we're going to be able to control things and opt people and do stuff like that. However, for the time being, let's go ahead and stop this server by typing STOP right here in this box. It will then stop the server. That's how you always want to start your server because if you don't, you'll have uh, some issues with it running in the background and things like that. Nevertheless, let's go ahead and open up server properties right here so we can go ahead and right click on that. Click open with, and then we want to double click on notepad. So here we are. Where'd it go? It disappeared. There we go. So um, this is the server properties. This is basically everything you can do and change in your server as a vanilla server, basically. So let's go ahead and first and foremost, find our IP here, which means the server IP for this server. To find this, you simply want to hit the Windows key on your keyboard and R at the exact same time. Type in three letters, CMD for command prompt. Hit enter and it will be there. Now, if you're on Windows 8 and this doesn't work for you, you can do this. Go up here to the Windows key, type CMD right here in the search function, and then you'll find it. Right click on it, run as administrator. Same thing, exact same way we got to it, except that will work on Windows 8. Nevertheless, now we want to go ahead and type in IP 
C-N-O-F-I-G. IP config. Hit enter, and boom, we've got some information here. Now we've got a local IP address with the IPv4 address, we've got a subnet mask, and we've got a default gateway. I'm going to go ahead and uh, tell you what you need here. You need both the default gateway and the IPv4 address, so either take note of these or just keep this window up, and that's what I'm going to do. Nevertheless, we want to go ahead and copy the IPv4 address right here over into where it says server IP, right next to the equal sign with zero spaces. So we want to do 192.168.1.1. Dot one nine six because that is my IPv4 address which is found over here awesome now we don't have to worry about this there's a lot more you can change here and you can look through it yourself however I'm gonna go ahead and file save and we're gonna move on now that we've got that we need to come back to our browser here and type in our default gateway right here for me that is 192.168.1.1 Boom, right like that, and there you go. You will see something exactly or completely different, most likely completely different from what you see right here, but don't be alarmed. We can make it through it together. Now, I know my router login and password because Linksys does it a little bit different. If you don't, you have a Linksys router, smart Wi-Fi, most likely you're going to have to talk to whoever set up the internet in your house. That could be your internet service provider. That could be, you know, like your significant other, your parents, something like that. But talk to them and they'll most likely be able to get that for you and, uh, and fill this out. Nevertheless, if you don't have a Linksys router and it's a router like most routers and it just has a stock default gateway and password or username and password, Password, luckily there's a website for that called portforward.com slash default username password or the third link second or third link in the description down below go down there click that it will take you to this page where you can scroll down until you find the kind of router you have let's go ahead and say Netgear is popular let's go ahead and say we've got a Netgear router right here it'll take us off to this we can then scroll down until we find the Netgear router we have for example I used to have the uh, WDR Where's it at? Right here, WNDR 4300, and the default username and passwords on that was admin and password. So I would come over here and type in admin and type in password. However, it's not like that, so I'm going to go ahead and uh, use my trusty little password manager to log in to my router. Oh, invalid password. I don't know why that happened. Give me two seconds to get the correct password. I'll meet you guys back here in uh, two seconds. There we go, correct password now entered. Let's go ahead and click sign in here, log in, or whatever you have. Again, you can get your password from this website, from the admin and password. If that doesn't work, you can go ahead and contact your internet service provider or whoever set up the router slash network infrastructure in your house, and uh, they should be able to help you out. Nevertheless, once we're here, let's go ahead and go into, for you, probably advanced, advanced setting, advanced apps and gaming, something like that is probably what you're going to want to do. For me, it's actually in security right because it's in security what that means is because what port forwarding is, is allows network connections into your connection into your internet basically for me it's in security apps and gaming it could be the same for you security apps and gaming it could be advanced apps and gaming just look around and look for apps or gaming or port forwarding slash port triggering or port forwarding whatever it is right just look around and look for that stuff. You're looking for port forwarding, you're looking for port triggering, you're looking for apps and gaming. It's going to be one of those three, right? So look for one of those three. Once you find it, go into it. If you have both port forwarding and port triggering, you want to go with port forwarding because that's what we're doing here. We're port forwarding. Nevertheless, we're going to go ahead and click this, which for me is single port forwarding. For you, that's what I'm saying, find port forwarding. Click add a new single port forward application name this can be whatever we'll just do minecraft external port is 25565 internal port 25565 protocol both or udp slash tcp yours might be udp slash tcp or it could be both in my case both device ip this is actually going to be your ipv4 address which is 1.196 boom just like that enabled and click save there you go click apply going to take a second apply it to your router and click OK guess what guys you're done the bulk of it is done you are now ready to go the hard parts over we can actually go ahead and minimize this and close out of that and close out of the server here actually before you close out of your server folder let's go ahead and run it by double clicking on minecraft underscore server yet again let's go ahead and again go over here into games then we're gonna go ahead and open up minecraft right like that and now we've got the Minecraft server right here. 
I put that up there in the corner so you guys can kind of see what's going on. And then we're going to play Minecraft 1.8.4. It will now open up, go through, open up 1.8.4, and we will join this server using two methods. One, to see if it's up and running, right? Just to see if it's working. The second, to see if other people can join the server. So let's go ahead and go into multiplayer here. We're going to direct connect to this right here. That's actually my old IP. Ha <laughs> But it's old, so it doesn't matter. Nevertheless, there's that. We're going to go ahead and type in 192 I believe dot 168 dot one dot what was it this is gonna be our IPv4 address here and this is why I said not to close out of it guys this is why I said not to close out of it dot 196 there you go so dot 196 basically just type your IPv4 address right here and then click join server if it joins your server is up and running okay boom there you go I spawned in water Quite literally, I spawned in water. Nevertheless, as you can see over here as well, Nick's Games has joined right there. So this is the server. It is up and running. However, this means I can join it myself. Well, what about my friends? How do they join it? Well, your friends join it using your public IP. To get your public IP, you can simply go to Google, right? So Google.com, right like that. And then you want to just type in two letters, IP, just like that. Hit enter. And from you, there's a big black box there. For me, I see my public IP address, and you'll see your public IP address here as well. So go ahead and give this to your friends. This is what your friends use, right? I'm going to go ahead and copy it and join this server using my public IP to show you guys it's working. Nevertheless, if you can join using your public IP, that means your friends can most likely join using your public IP and vice versa. Again, for you, these are black boxes. For me, I can actually see them. The reason is you can do malicious things with your public IP. I won't give my public IP out publicly for the simple reason of people can do malicious things with it. Just like you shouldn't give this to everyone on the internet. This should only be given to your friends and family and trusted friends. And if you want to do a server for everyone on the internet, you're going to have to spend a little bit of money and get an Apex server or something like that. Now let's go and join server. And there you go. Worked perfectly. I actually joined quicker through the public IP than it did through the non-public IP. And just to show you guys that I am in the server, there it is. And uh, we can actually go ahead and op ourselves by typing OP Nix Games. Now what this does is allow you to be sure to be able to break blocks and things like that. As well as, you know, like change game modes, game mode 1. There you go, and there's creative and all that stuff. So now we're ready to go, right? I mean, we've opt. We can ban people if they join the server and, like, your friend joins and is just being mean or something. You can ban him, right? It's your server. You can ban him. So uh, there is that, and hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you did, please give a thumbs up. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Check out rkt.us slash apex to get an awesome 24-hour server that you can have, like, anyone you want join it, as well as many, many other things. It's not using your own computer's resources. Like, this right here is using my computer, so that that means if we were to get like 20 people in here, my computer could and probably would start lagging. You don't want that to happen. And if you don't want that to happen, you can get an Apex server. So anyway, guys, thanks for watching. I'm Nick's Games, and I'm out, guys. Peace. And here's some videos you guys might want to go check out. Down that way, we've got how to start a 24-hour server. That actually walks you through starting the server that I was talking about in this, the Apex server. It walks you through starting it step by step with everything included. Like, everything is there, so go check that out. It's an awesome video that if you want to start a 24-hour server, that's where I would recommend doing it at because it's going to show you everything that you need to do from purchasing the server to getting onto your server the first time. So it's incredible. Go check it out. And down the other way. No, no, wait, th that way, down that way, we've got how to install texture packs in Minecraft 1.8.4. So if you want texture packs in 1.8.4, then go check out that video, because that's what that'll show you how to do. So anyway, guys, thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed this video. I'm Nick's Games, and I'm out, guys. Peace. Subscribe and like if you haven't already.